So last time, Napoleon was born in Corsica, moved to France, got a scholarship, then the French Revolution happened and he fled back to Corsica. Until the leader of Corsica gave the island to the British and Napoleon had to flee to the mainland in 1793. Now with the friendship of Augustin Robespierre and a fellow Corsican Antoine Salicetti, who is ready to rise up the ranks. He was commanded to put down a recent rebellion in Toulon, where some guys not really happy with political opponents being arrested, opened the port in the city to the British, Spanish and Neapolitans, and raised a royalist flag on the port. They'd been fighting since the end of August, and with a lot of officers in the army fleeing with the royal family, the new republican government really needed any man they could get to force the British out of the port. No, I'm no Baz Battles, at least not yet, so I can't really do a good job on the mapping front of how this battle went down. If you actually want to see all the battle movements, there's a video by Epic History TV which does a really good job of this, but I'm stealing his map, sorry. Napoleon arrived on the 8th of September, and seeing the enemy already fortified in the city surrounding the fortress, he knew that the only way to defeat them without massive losses was to use cannons. He didn't have a lot though but sent people from Marseille, Avignon and the army of Italy to get some. He also went around the countryside near the battle and convinced retired officers to join him and got at least a hundred cannons as well as some men and also set a workshop to make cannons, gunpowder and muskets. Seeing this the enemies retreated further into the port. There's also a story that when he moved the cannons closer towards the enemy ship, people were complaining that I don't want to get shot, but Napoleon just changed the name with the men without fear and suddenly got a lot more volunteers. He also realised that if a fort nearby was captured, it was really close enough to the port that they, that they could fire their guns and shoot the ships, even if they moved closer to the port. And the general agreed, and on December 17th, after some setbacks, they took the fort. The British and Spanish said, well shit we can't really afford to lose our really expensive ships. Let's go. Then everyone saw a man light a fire near the port. They were burning the French ships. Napoleon said, who burnt those ships? Somebody said, I believe it was a Brit named Sidney Smith. His commander comes up to him after the battle and said, wow, nice job making the British flee, General Bonaparte. The next day, Napoleon's regiment went into the city of Toulon and executed anyone suspected of helping the British and the Spanish. When they left Toulon two weeks later, 2,800 lay dead. The news reached Paris days later and his friend Augustin Robespierre was like, wow, guys did you see that? They kicked the enemy out of Toulon. I hear a guy named Napoleon did most of the work though. I read his pamphlet a while back and he seems to be very loyal to the Republic. Do you mind if he became an officer in the army of Italy? Yeah, that's alright. So in February, the French army across from Italy invaded Piedmont with Bonaparte in tow. Now I know you're probably wondering why France is at war and it's something I touched on briefly last time but basically when Louis XVI became a prisoner in Paris, Austria and Prussia invaded to try and put him back on the throne. When he got executed in January 1793, seeing France beat itself up a few more countries thought, I want a piece of that. There's going to be more detail to this in my French Revolution video which should be coming out in June. Anyway, the army led by the freshly promoted General of the Brigade Bonaparte, the army's new artillery chief, Bonaparte drew up a strategic plan to dislodge the army and gain access to Italy. The French seized Sarajevo on 28th of April. The French lost 1500 men, while the Allies lost 2800. After a few more battles that aren't really important to say in detail, Napoleon finished the campaigning season and went back to France. Augustin Robespierre said, hey can you be a diplomat to, to Genoa and try and persuade them for an alliance? This was at the worst time possible. When he came back to France, it was the 20th of July. He's sitting around his barracks for about a week, but then he hears the news that Maximilien Robespierre has been arrested along with Augustin and Napoleon, a friend of the two guys, is going to be thrown in prison. Don't worry though, he doesn't really stay there for long because France is basically at war with everyone and even though he was an enemy, he was still really good at artillery and the new government needed his help. After a year out of prison, Austria was ready to attack France again. But that wasn't the only uprising planned. While the war was going on, the government 
was broke, and they persecuted Catholics who had been previously haunted for their religious beliefs. Armed with Austrian guns and with 25,000 men, marched towards the government in the Tuileries Palace. On the 5th of October 1795, but the government only had 5,000 men. They needed someone reliable, someone with military experience, somebody with a great knowledge of cannons and artillery to try and defend the government. They needed Napoleon. Seeing a large amount of people around Paris coming from every nook and cranny, converging in the distance, he decides to load his cannons with grape shot, which is basically a giant case filled with hundreds of musket balls that travelled 550 metres per second. It had never been used in the streets of Paris before because it was just that horrific. Napoleon would later say, If you treat a mob with kindness, those creatures fancy themselves invulnerable. If you hang a few, they'll get tired of the game and become as submissive and humble as they ought to be. He was outnumbered 6 to 1. He stood at the post commanding for two hours, even having his horse killed under him. And by the day's end, 300 royalists lay dead outside the church near the palace. It was horrific. When a lady asked him how he could fire so horribly and without mercy on the mob, he replied, a soldier's only a machine to obey orders. But he didn't point out who was the one that had given the orders. This action made him famous and infamous countrywide. It was also at this point that he met a widow by the name of Josephine de Bohane, his future wife. 